ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Retro Warriors episode 378. Woo! As always, I'm your host, Justin Baker, and as always, I'm joined by resident old bastard, Chris Saturn. Hello. Hi, Saturn. Hi. It's, it's you. You're here. I am here. <laughs> I made it. You made it. <laughs> I was so concerned. That's good. I didn't, I didn't want to worry you, Justin. I'm here. Um, no real housekeeping this week. Uh, guy's uh, still not with us, so he'll have to make up his segment at a later date. When you um, say he's not with us, it makes it sound like he passed on. He didn't. He he passed on into busyness, and then he will return <laughs> to the 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 world of not busyness. He got better. He got, <laughs> he got better. <laughs> he's no longer with us, but he'll get better. Yeah, he was busy, but he'll get better. Yeah. So don't 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 you worry, your pretty little head. <laughs> He shall return to us. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, he's not with us anymore, but we're going to resurrect him on a later show. <laughs> give him a few days. <laughs> um, uh, my week. Mm -hmm. I picked up the Monster Hunter Rise yeah. again. Nice. Uh, I picked it up on the PC because it was yeah. on the sale. Mm -hmm. And uh, I bought a copy for Andrew, deck. and I was like, you have to play this with me. Right. And he was like, all right, well, if I have to. <laughs> um, and it's 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 good. Um, it's good. Monster Hunter Rise again. Right. Yeah. Um, I have had a couple of like weird sort of technical issues, nothing hmm. in, the act in an actual mission. Um, the issue I run into is sometimes in town when I run up to people, I have to stand mm. in front of them for a second for the little uh, context thing to pop up to talk hmm. to them. That is weird. But... That's it's like the minorest of annoyances, you know. <laughs> um, and it's it's good. It looks it looks so much better <laughs> than the Switch version. What? It looks so much, and it runs at most of the. So I've got the graphics cranked up above what the default is mm -hmm. on the game. Okay. Um, so my frame rate does dip below sixty. But I've never seen it get below the high 40s, and I rarely see it dip below the 50s. So you're telling me that a game that was originally designed for a 12-year-old ARM chip uh, mm -hmm. runs great on your brand new Steam Deck. I'm shocked, too. I know. I mean, you know, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> but it looks fantastic and it's such a it's such a uh, uh still such a great game just stellar i thought i'd be upset about starting over i'm not it's just so good that i'll nice. just i'll just fucking play it and it's fantastic Thanks, um uh uh i've i've uh made it past the one star quests and so i'm moving into the two star quests nice uh and it's just it's a great game it's also one of those games that because it is so fast mm -hmm. having it at 60 fps really does make an actual legitimate difference nice in the game because on switch i believe it was 30 fps almost all the time and would dip mm -hmm. and 30 fps for a fast-paced third person action game it, it can feel a little bit rough yeah I can um see that. especially because it, it it involves a lot of camera panning right because you're fighting these monsters and they're running all over the fucking place so it's a lot of panning the camera mm -hmm. uh and that can that can feel a little a little jittery at lower frame that. rates um uh, my only complaint mm -hmm. Is that my favorite part of Monster Hunter Rise is that they have a system um, that makes it the only game that I'll play online with randoms. Hmm. And it's fantastic. So the way it works is to get the next level of quests, mm -hmm. they give you a big list of quests to do. Sure. And they mark some of them as key quests. And you have to do so many key quests it's where to you advance. It's a key party, right? <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> Stay a while. Take your armor off. <laughs> And, and when you've done enough key quests, you mm -hmm. unlock the, like, you know, not, they don't really have boss battles, but, you know, the 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 boss encounter, I guess, right, right. of that tier. And then you move up a tier. Sure. And what's, what used to suck about it was, all right, I need to fight this fucking whatever mm -hmm. dragon thing, uh, a Ludroth or whatever I'm fighting. Mm -hmm. And so I'd have to go make a lobby online or find a lobby, find other people. We all have to ready up. We have to eat our meal. We have to get our gear. We have to go out on the quest, do the quest, complete the quest, and come back for us to right. all complete the quest. Yeah. And it kind of sucked. You know, making a lobby with randos just sucks. True. So, so it has this system where you can just put out a signal mm -hmm. where you go, you can either start it and say, I want to put out signal requests, or you can just go to the board and say, is anyone looking for help with this quest? Mm -hmm. And it puts you literally right in the quest it may be in progress it may be almost over nice but wherever you show up in it you get to fight the monster you get all the rewards for it and it marks you as having completed the quest yeah. 
There's literally no communication ever required between you and the other human beings, and you are always playing cooperatively. Mm -hmm. And in Rise, you cannot hit each other with your weapons. See, this all sounds exactly like all of my multiplayer experience in uh, Final Fantasy XIV as well. Not ever yeah. talking to anybody, just entering a queue, sometimes jumping in midway through a dungeon, finishing yep. it, never speaking to them. Yeah, which which I think we can all agree is the best way to play multiplayer games. Correct, yes. Uh, the problem is the PC player base is quite a bit smaller than the Switch player base. Mm, that's unfortunate. And it's not cross-platform. It's not cross-platform. And that's this is le legitimately problematic for me because it is one of the only games I do play online pretty frequently. Yeah. Uh, it's not so low that I can't get any game playing done online. You just but have to wait longer. It's low enough that if it's like the middle of a weekday, um, chances of finding someone looking for that same quest is pretty low. I went on, and, and so finally it has the traditional lobby system built in. Right. So I was like, well, maybe everyone on PC is doing lobbies. You know how PC yeah. people are. They're weird. True. And so I go look at the lobbies, and on all of Steam, there are two lobbies. Ooh. And I was like, oh, that didn't, that didn't bode well. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> you know, so that's uh, that's slightly upsetting. It's yeah, a little it's annoying. A little sad. But, you know, I'm sure I hit it in the evenings. I can get some questing done. And I did right. some this afternoon uh, where I was just jumping in and I would I'd turn on the signal so people could randomly join. And I had a couple people join. You know? It sounds like you just need to buy copies from more people. That, that's got to be it, right? Yeah. I just, need like 12 more Andrews that you can buy games for. Now, I know there is a big, gigantic, like 20,000 person Monster Hunter Discord where you can pop in there and be like, hey, I'm fighting this on PC and people right. will just show up and help you. Yeah. But that's already more work than yeah, just clicking the button. already more communication, too. Yeah. It, 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 so I don't, but then also, I haven't played the Switch one since around launch. So maybe mm -hmm. it's kind of the same. I was True. thinking about booting the Switch version up just to see, like, what is the online situation looking like there? But I think the trick is, I think the PC version mm -hmm. is uh, region based. Mm -hmm. And the Switch version, as far as I know, it's just the whole world. Everyone yeah. who is playing the game on Switch on planet Earth. Right. And so I think that's probably what's hamstringing the, the PC community. I can see that. Now, granted, it's a game you can fully enjoy by yourself, but right. I, I like playing Monster Hunter online. It yeah. is actually a fun game to play online. So that's been kind of the only bummer. Other than that, just kind of trucking back through it. And it's just, oh, man, still playing nice. with the Switch Axe, which yeah. is the best weapon. And it's uh, it's a good time. And nice. I have n no intentions of ever learning another weapon because I actually sat down and it had been so long since I played that I was like, oh, I need to go relearn my combos. Because it's kind of fighting game-esque in that regard where right. you do want to learn specific combos. Right, right. And I was like, well, I'll just go hunt like a baggie or something low level that I can go in and, and just fucking kill and I don't have to worry about it. And I'll, maybe I'll get in the swing of things. And immediately, like, muscle memory remembered all of the combos <laughs> for the Switch Axe. Nice. Which is not a very complex weapon, but sure. it was it was nice to go right back into it and be like, I guess my body knows how to do it, so my brain doesn't have to do any work. <laughs> right. And so that's nice. been that's been nice. Anyway, that's that's it. I was just lots of Monster Hunter trying nice. to coerce Andrew into playing it with me. That's just kind of been what I've been up nice. to. I uh, I picked up the uh, Xbox version of One Shot, which what I played that? a while back. Uh, is it is it is a cutesy little uh, uh, adventure game that kind of plays uh, from the perspective of like a, an overhead uh, action adventure, but without the action. Essentially, <laughs> like it, it looks like a, a, a Zelda or a JRPG or something as far as its perspective. Okay, but, uh, there's no combat. It's it's just uh -huh. adorable, and it is uh, completely narrative driven. But it's a, a metafiction game, uh, so it does okay. uh, you know get outside of the game to address you. But that's that's kind of my problem with it is it, it like other metafiction games that have been ported from PC to console, like uh, uh, Doki Doki Literature Club or Undertale. They also had to make concessions with one shot where they had to do something or it wouldn't work the way it does on PC. So they, like Doki Doki Literature Club, just made a fake desktop environment that you start in when you start the game. And then you have to launch the game from within that, which oh. really breaks the entire metafiction illusion entirely. Yeah. Which yeah, is a shame. Kind of does. But the game itself is still so charming the I don't care. It's just such a charming and adorable game. And the the mm -hmm. main character, uh, 
uh, he looks like a cat and and that's cute too uh he insists he's not a cat though so i don't of course don't yeah wanna, right he i don't want to offend him right uh, but it is a, an adorable little game um uh, there is some mild existential dread you know these these things happen i feel like that's just kind of a explanation of general life though there's some <laughs> right. mild existential dread right yeah um but no it's uh it's it's cute uh i still probably would go with the pc version which i think still has, has a free version on itch.io um mm-hmm. or you can buy it on uh on steam yeah but it's it's good uh i was planning on playing some valkyrie elysium but my copy was delayed so no maybe next week I'm very excited to see what you think about that to see if it'll be my first uh, Valkyrie game. Well, it also has a demo available. So, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. Square Enix has been pumping out demos for all their games lately. Star Ocean 6 apparently has like a five hour demo. I don't really do the demo. I just do the Saturn test and I make Saturn (laughs) tell me if I like it or not. That's fair. (laughs) For anyone Um, out there looking to figure out if if you want a game or not, just get yourself a Saturn (laughs) and then just be like, hey, Saturn, was that a good game? And then you then, you know, and then you can. You can base it on that. Uh, so uh, I'm I'm concerned. Well, I'm not concerned. I'm curious about Valkyrie Elysium because the previous uh, Valkyrie games uh, played much like the early Star Ocean games where they were, uh, well, the first one anyway, was a, a 2D action RPG uh, when mm-hmm. you were in battle. So uh, this one looks like more of an ease game almost as mm-hmm. far as like uh, instant uh, action RPG combat. So yeah. Curious what they do with it. Um, yeah. But in the meantime, uh, Trails from Zero came out in the U.S. And man, it's still a great game. It is just as good as it was last time. Holy mm-hmm. cow. Uh, and it's and it's a great game to start on the series on, uh, though it does reference stuff from the Sky games. Uh, it, it also, like all the main characters in it are brand new characters. The area yeah. you're in is a brand new area. It's a self-contained game. It doesn't end in a cliffhanger like so many of the other games in the series. So it's a great game to start on. It'll introduce you to enough stuff that it might make you interested in other games. But I do want to mention how weird this release is <laughs> because it's on PC, it's on PS4, and it's on Switch. Mm-hmm. Uh, which of those do you think is the worst version? Well, I mean, my automatic assumption is always the Switch version. That is incorrect. The PS4 they gotta version it. is the worst version. Wow. So... The game came out in Japan on PS4 uh, three or four years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And when uh, NIS America got the rights to release it outside of Japan, uh, they wanted to uh, enhance the game. Well, first of all, they had to make a PC port. They had to make a Switch port. And the the person they hired to do the PC port, uh, Durante, uh, is also the guy that modded the original release of Dark Souls on PC to make it, you know, function. Yeah, work. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and he is incredibly good at what he does. And he added all this shit into the game that shouldn't, that normally doesn't appear until four or five games later in the series. Mm-hmm. Uh, he also uh, redid all of the 2D graphics. He did AI upscaling to make them look beautiful in 4k uh all the 3d graphics he uh re-rendered at uh, native 4k resolution instead of the exact same resolution as the ps vita version which is what the ps4 game does Mm -hmm. um and all the textures were redrawn so it looks great it has bonus quality of life features really great on pc and then the switch version is based on the pc version so it also has all that stuff and so right. they, they tried to get all that added into the PS4 version, and Falcom said, well, no, the PS4 version can't have features in the West that it didn't have in Japan. Oh, no. So the PS4 version is identical to that original Japanese release, just with a translated script. Oh, jeez. And the, P- the PC and Switch versions both have all these new features and better textures and better graphics, and they both run at 60 frames per second, unlike the PS4 which runs at the PS Vita's 30 frames per second. Mm. So it is it is hard to recommend the PS4 version, but it's still such a great game that I still would anyway if that's your only console. Right. So. Right. But anyway, Weird. it's a good game, though. Let's do the news. Mm-hmm. First up, Capcom has discontinued the online service for Mega Man Powered Up on PSP. Uh, I believe I've already seen people working very hard to download Dark and catalog it, yeah all of the yes. uh, like some 80 user thousand levels or something right. which is great honestly i didn't even know it was still active i'm kind of shocked it is myself i am uh, i'm glad that it is being archived i'm also glad they kept it active for this long yeah for sure 
for sure. So hopefully it all. I think they said they're going to bundle it all in like one big save file. Yeah, which is nice. And and you can just download like thousands of Mega Man powered up uh, levels, and it will not fit on any officially licensed memory stick. <laughs> nope. Although to be fair, uh, half the games don't even fit on any <laughs> officially licensed memory stick. True. Uh, Crix is testing a new Turbo EverDrive that emulates the Turbo CD ROM ROM from the Hue card slot. Yes. Also testing a model with an optional expansion port connector for better video outputs. Yeah, so uh, uh, very similar to the uh, Super SD System 3, which mm-hmm. uh, Terra Onion put out. Uh, so the uh, the optional version will connect to that back connector rather than the Hue card port. But he yeah. said he does have ODE working on the Hue card port. Uh, so if your turbo is already modded, you can use that. And then you don't even need a turbo CD. You can just plug that into your Hue card port of a PC engine and you have something the size of a PC engine that can play all PC engine and all PC engine CD games. Awesome. That's crazy. Um, Onimusha is back oh. in anime form. Oh. <laughs> I will say, I watched the cyberpunk anime, Edge Runners. Yeah, yeah. And it was fucking awesome. You know, the uh, the Castlevania anime that Netflix did was really good, too. Yeah. I, I was, I, 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 like, I was laying in bed, like, really sick the other day, and I was like, I don't know, Edge Runners, it's on, it's on the front page, pick it, just shut right. up. Um, and I watched the whole fucking thing in, like, a day. It was fantastic. Nice. I thought it was really, really good. I was surprised how good it was. So I'm, I'm positive about an Onomusha. If, if video game properties turning into good anime on Netflix is what the future holds, then I'm okay with that. I <laughs> like right. that. You know. I can't complain about that. Castlevania was good. Yeah. Edge Runners was good. Something else probably was. I don't, I don't even know what other no, video games have been turned the only things into. that have ever happened. There are, I, do try to, I, tr- I do try to watch newer Netflix animes, mm-hmm. and they're just... They're so bad. <laughs> <laughs> they're just so bad. Hopefully Onomusha doesn't fall into that camp. Uh, I hope so too. So far, again, the uh, video game property ones seem good. That's good. What did I do? I, I watched one called Bastard the other day. Oh, is it based on the original Bastard? I don't know. Uh, okay. But it was bad. Mm. <laughs> it was bad. That's unfortunate. <laughs> um, maybe it gets better after the first episode. I don't know. I don't know. I think there's a video game based on that too, if I remember right. Really? I just watched it because the title, the title card. Like the words were spelled out like like it looked like a Yes album cover. <laughs> uh, it was very like weird bubbly letter looking. And I was like, I don't know. Sure. This is a swear word. It's got weird letters. I'll watch that. And it was, oh God, it was so lame. It was a, a Super NES uh, bastard game. Well, in does Japan it, anyway. Does it have an exclamation point at yeah, the end? Yeah, it has two exclamation points. Mm, see, I think it's the same. So I'm guessing it's a remake of there There was an older version. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It looks like it is a Netflix original <coughs> series based on the original bastard manga. Well, huh. let me tell you, didn't enjoy that episode. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was so cringy by the end of it that I was like, I can't, I can't. I'm, I've got a 104.5 fever, and even I can't stomach this right now. I can't. I, can't. <laughs> I, I had one friend that was uh, a big fan of it and insisted that it was worth watching, and, and I also didn't get into it. But that was that was the the older early yeah. '90s series, the original. Yeah. Uh, something about early '90s anime being super cringy. Like I can yeah. kind of handle it just because it's all so bad back <laughs> right. then that it's it's kind of like it's okay, you know. Yeah. But when it's now, I'm watching it. I'm like, we know better. Stop. <laughs> like, I can't. <laughs> we don't have to put up with this. <laughs> uh, Christ- Christoph Gans mm-hmm. announces he'll Gons. be Gans announces he'll be starting production on a new Silent Hill movie in February yep. as the Korean ratings board leaks an upcoming uh, console Silent Hill game. So this that's... is the most credible rumor that I've heard yet. This is okay. This is the first one I've heard that actually makes me think, oh, maybe there is a Silent Hill in works. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. I I still won't believe it until I own it and it is in my hand, yeah. because I've well, even seen... then all, all all signs point to it being like not a full sized game, right? Yeah, the well, like the a... yeah, the name of it uh, I don't remember what it is, but it sounds like it's just a demo based yeah, on yeah, it's like first beginnings or something. Yeah, like it was that. like some sh- kind of the short message or something. I yeah. don't remember exactly what it is, but it sounds like it's probably just a demo or a teaser or something. So the any potential full game is still probably years away. But uh, it is nice to see that uh, it can exist in forms other than skateboards. True. Yeah, true. It's exciting. Uh, Atlas is suing fans mm. over a private server for Shin Megami Tensei Imagine Online, which shut down in 2016. The fuck you doing, Atlas? <sighs> that frustrates me. Because, uh, man, from, from a preservation standard, 
what else are we going to fucking do? The game's been gone for six years, guys. Yeah, just leave it alone. Like, the only thing I could think is maybe like if they're selling access to the private server, oh. like, I, I don't know. You get kind of into some weird weeds sure. anytime money is exchanging hands. Right. But at the same time, like, just let them fucking play their fucking game that exactly. you shut down. Right. Like, just, just let them do it. It'd be one thing if they were planning on reopening it or something. But yeah, there's no indication that's going to happen. Uh, magical Drop 6 coming this winter. I'm nice. so stoked on this right? new Magical Drop right? out of nowhere. Yeah. Granted, Magical Drop has never really changed its gameplay formula at all, so it's <laughs> effectively the same game, but it's more Magical Drop. Did you pick up uh, Magical Drop 5 before it was delisted? Uh, I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've got it on my Steam library, uh, and it's uh, it's uh, Magical Drop. I don't. I don't believe I, I picked that one up. No, oh. no, I guess well, not. I believe it is delisted now, so you might not. Be well, able to that play. sucks. <laughs> but still, magical drop. Yeah, good to see it. Definitely. Uh, Sega has licensed their arcade RTS Sengokushi Tyson to Double Jump Tokyo to develop a blockchain-powered follow-up. Hmm. So NFTs in your Sega games. So uh, I will say. Uh, and I, I, you know, I don't like to uh, say anything even remotely positive about NFTs. However, in yes. this one situation, I can almost, almost understand where they're coming from because <clears throat> the original arcade game this is based on used uh, trading cards. You would have to buy physical trading okay. cards in order to play the game and you would scan them into the arcade machine to play it. Mm hmm. And it seems that this time they're trying to go for a digital version of that same thing that is uh, blockchain powered. Because as we know, uh, we never figured out how to do online collectibles before blockchain. That was impossible. <laughs> yeah. No God one forbid they just give out. you an account and register shit to it's it. That would be sir. You can't no. Got to use the. So yeah, I, I would. I get what you're saying. Like uh, yeah. uh, for this particular property, it does. I don't want to say makes sense because right. it still doesn't make fucking sense because NFTs but it's, don't make yeah, sense. But it's almost understandable. Almost. I, yeah. I can understand how they'd end up there. Right. I still think it's stupid and they yes, shouldn't. Exactly. You know, for sure. I mean, I was collecting Neopets in like 2002 and those didn't need a blockchain. You yeah, know? You, they, there was totally a blockchain. There was like 12 blockchains. You, for, for Neopets? No. No, I'm just saying. Why? Wow. I'm just saying. I collected digital goods. <laughs> Didn't need them. Yeah. Uh, Limited Run Games, an embracer group company, has announced Press Run, a book publishing division. Which is fine. So, yeah, haven't that's they put fine. Out books in the past anyway? I thought so, but I, maybe not. Yeah. I don't know. I could have sworn they had, but either way, it's it's good. I'm glad there's more uh, books coming out. It's, I'm glad they announced a whole new division of their company because that means that they're totally caught up on all previous orders, right? I, it must mean that, mm, right? Okay. Good. Thankfully, Jeremy Parrish, media curator, is is <laughs> is, is, is in charge of this. So yeah. That's, well, he's that's... been uh, involved with LRG for a while now, hasn't he? Right, but he, uh, yeah, yeah, he has, yeah. Uh, but he seems to be taking particular, uh, uh, you know, figurehead status yeah. for the the press run. And it looks like they are publishing a few of his books uh, specifically as well, which I thought they had published some of his books in the past, which is why I thought they were already making books. Uh, I have some of his books, and in, in, I, I don't know. He's he's been through <laughs> that dude's been putting out video game books for a long ass time. <laughs> True, yeah. And he has been through the ringer. So, you know, good I'm sure on he's him been for having a few publishers. Yeah. Good on him for having a, a steady publisher. Right. I'll say that a steady Indeed. job and a steady publisher. He deserves Absolutely. it. Exactly. Uh, Google has announced the inevitable death of Stadia. Oh, oh what? No. Oh, what? How could we have seen this coming. Service will cease in January. All hardware purchases through the Google Store and software purchases will be refunded. Save files, <laughs> screenshots, and achievement history can be exported until the service ends. Uh, it's, this feels like the most inevitable story we've, uh, ever seen. I, <laughs> ever. It's right up there with the Coleco Chameleon not coming out. I mean, <laughs> uh, I, 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 you know, I do feel bad. I went to the Stadia mm -hmm. subreddit to yeah. see everyone yelling at each other. <laughs> and there was some yelling at each other, but a lot yeah. of it was just people that were just like, man, I, I literally don't know how to play video games anymore. I travel yeah. for work. Yeah. I'm always on the move. I cannot be carrying around big bulky laptops or video game consoles. Like I, it's just, the, this fit my lifestyle so right. well. What do I do? Game Pass or Luna. That's what you do. Yeah, that, I mean, that's the answer. There are full entire alternative services that do the same thing. Yes. Um, 
So, you know, I felt bad for those people. Then there was also other people. (laughs) Well, my favorite was a guy that commented and he said, LOL, we all knew this was coming. And then he commented on his own comment and just said, how do I get my refund? (laughs) 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 We all knew this was coming that I poured hundreds of dollars into. (laughs) Yeah, it's pretty silly. And the thing is, some people are really going to get hundreds of dollars back on this. Yeah. Which you know, uh, that's good. Yeah, uh, I'm that's glad that's that, that's Google the is... right thing to do. Right. Uh, that you know, actually, I think that's uh, above and beyond what they needed to do. Yeah. Um, uh, it's still the right thing to do, but it's not anything they needed to do. So, uh, kudos to know. Google for having the uh, the marketing think... foresight to do that. However, I do think they fucked over a lot of developers in the process. Oh yeah, oh, because yeah. Uh, a lot of developers are saying they didn't know it was shutting down until it happened, including uh, a publisher who put out a game that morning, hours before <laughs> mm-hmm. Stadia shut down. So their game was available for sale on Stadia for like three hours, yeah. and then the service ended. And they were like, "Well, we just did a marketing promotion for this game that we can't sell anymore." So. Thanks for wasting our marketing dollars. And and other uh, indie devs had been saying that they had projects in production and they were not told that the service was ending. And some of them were saying this is devastating to us because Stadia was the most lucrative uh, platform for indie yeah. developers. And their whole you know marketing strategy for the next year was based around this Stadia release followed by other releases it mm-hmm. was supposed to pay for the rest of the game and now it doesn't and now they're you know kind of uh, up the creek yeah I, I do feel like refunding the hardware yeah. was a bonus that's that that was a True. nice bonus yeah. refunding the games i think is the minimum they could do to avoid a class action right cuz cuz they sold these things that are no longer available but now we are yeah. learning that that's uh, just uh, par for the course because uh, I don't know if you saw that other story this week, but uh, Warner Brothers is just straight up taking away digital purchases <laughs> from other marketplaces. Yep. So if you bought some uh, TV shows, I think it was some some show from Adult Swim or something, uh, it is uh, being taken away from your Amazon library, from your uh, iTunes library, wherever you happen to buy it. You don't get a refund or anything. You just lose the thing. Just go bought. take it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some other news did come out of this. A leaked report says Google's Phil Harrison canceled uh-huh. a follow-up to Death Stranding that was being developed by Kojima as a Stadia exclusive uh-huh. because they felt that single-player games weren't irrelevant anymore. Yeah, he also canceled a Yu Suzuki game that was going to be a Stadia exclusive. What a fucking moron. Uh, what was the other? Oh, a uh, game from Harmonix. Yeah, it was the other one that he had canceled that was going to be Stadia exclusive. Phil Harrison, you dumb piece of shit. Right? What a fucking idiot. He fucked up the PS3 release. He fucked up the Xbox One release. And then Google hired him. And they're like, this time he's got it. How is this guy working? I don't know. I don't How is he still? Know. I can do a better job than him. And I'm an idiot. And oh my, my, my thought is that Phil Harrison is who you hire when you want your entire video game division to be a tax write-off. Because uh, I can't uh, think of another good reason that he has a job. It makes no fucking sense. It really, it really, it's just Saturn. ridiculous. And I was I was reading about the, uh, the, the, the actual community managers that Google pays to promote Stadia. And... Um, they were promoting, you know, that new game that released. They were promoting that there's a new user interface for the Stadia uh, on uh, Chromecast that launched the day before it shut down. And they were like, guys, this new UI is coming within the next couple of weeks to everyone. It's going to be great. And yeah. those people weren't told until the press release went live. Yeah. That's just so fucked. The whole thing is so fucked. We yeah. knew it. Right. From day one, we've all been standing around waiting for this train to derail. Exactly. And three years on, it does. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, fuck. The least surprising news story, and it still took people off guard. Assholes. Fuck yeah. you, Google. Right? Garbage people. <laughs> um, Speaking of that garbage bring, people. <laughs> that brings us to the topic at hand. We're talking about acclaim entertainment. The garbage people. Developer and publisher of wonderful games like Turok 2 Seeds of Evil on uh-huh. Game Boy Color, which yeah. I played obsessively. <laughs> as and well as Turok 2 Seeds of Evil on Nintendo 64, which I played obsessively. And South Park on Nintendo 64. And Turok 1. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, other stuff. Oh, uh, I was oh f- and, and Mary Kate and Ashley crash course. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Did they do the Mary Kate and Ashley pocket planer too? They because did I have every that. Mary Kate and Ashley game. I have that pocket. That's a decent pocket planer on the Game Is Boy it? Color. If you're looking for a better pocket planer on the Game Boy Color, you have few better options <laughs> than Mary Kate and Ashley's pocket planer. That's good. Good to know. And I wish that was a joke. <laughs> Uh, a claim was found in 1987 in Oyster Bay, New York, USA. Yes. Um, I. <laughs> my first encounter with them, I mean, uh, you know, I played some of their earlier stuff that they published. Mm-hmm. Uh, I played uh, uh, Bart Simpson versus the Space Mutants. I played right. the crap out of that. Yeah. You know. Like, what a shit game that is. Uh, the, the, specifically the NES one. Yep. And yeah, it's... I played... I played a ton of that. Yeah. I played a whole lot of that. Yeah, I played uh, a lot I, of that. I played uh, a lot of uh, their Game Boy Simpsons game, Escape from Camp Deadly. Yeah. Uh, that's a garbage game, yeah. too. Uh, uh, they published was, NBA Jam. Yeah, but that was Midway. Um, and then oh, yeah. uh, and then uh, uh, WrestleMania, I played a bunch of their WWF games on NES. Yeah, I played, and I played a ton of Turok, man. Yeah. I played a fucking lot of Turok 2. A lot of people played a lot of Turok 2. They also did the... Didn't they publish the wonderfully named uh, Iron Man slash Exo Man of War <laughs> I believe in heavy claim, metal? Yes. Just I the worst video game name of all time. Well, it's a, uh, apparently a crossover between two comics, Iron Man and Exo Man of War. No, I it. get what it is. Yeah. It's still stupidly it named, is. though. Oh, I agree. Uh, Exo Man of War was that weird Valiant joint. Well, that's, but back back before uh, Valiant came back, I guess. Yeah, I think that was uh, possibly after Acclaim bought Valiant, but we'll get to that. Yeah. Um. So let's just uh, let's just jump right into yeah. early Acclaim history. Yeah. So uh, it was founded by uh, some former Activision employees, uh, Greg Fishbach, Robert Holmes, and Jim Skoroposky. Uh, yeah. And uh, much like uh, the the former oh, Batman Forever, did they do Batman Forever? They. Uh, I think so. I'm pretty sure they did. Yes. I'm fairly sad like too. Did. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so uh, Activision in turn was founded by former Atari employees, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, when they founded Activision, uh, I don't remember if we've mentioned this factoid on the show or not, but they had uh, intended to make Activision appear alphabetically before Atari when people were searching for companies and Mm -hmm. so they made activision come first so acclaim also wanted to do that however another company had come around called accolade also founded by former activision employees and so acclaim wanted to also be before uh, uh, accolade alphabetically right so then they named their company ah (laughs) if more activision spinoffs happened eventually they would all just be called ah (laughs) And then by the end of it, they'd just be punctuation, which I think alphabetically <laughs> often comes before the letters. Right. Uh, eventually, so you'd you just go. have a company called Interabang. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, and so okay. well, okay. go, go ahead. ahead. No, 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 I know, Sandy, <laughs> you go ahead. I was going to say, so they basically were just a publishing house. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They just wanted to publish games. They weren't looking to develop anything in house. Um, they, they were mostly uh, localizing Japanese games. Uh, and the few things that they they did that were original were all outsourced. It was stuff like uh, uh, Wizards and Warriors and WrestleMania, which were both done by Rare, and then there's Simpsons games, which were done by Imagineering, and uh, stuff like Airwolf that was done by Beam Software. Uh, yeah. So it was anything that they did that was original was outsourced. They they didn't I remember, make anything in the house. I remember them being very tied to Iguana. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they purchased Iguana eventually. Did they own them? I, I, I just assumed they did because I always remembered seeing a claim next to the iguana logo with yeah. the iguana. So, yeah, that was that uh, was in sixty four kind of... era. But yeah, they did. Yeah. They did purchase iguana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, they 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 were pretty big on that. And in order to help them push all of these games, they were localizing or making or publishing anyway. Uh, they teamed up with Saban Entertainment. Uh, who, oh, wonderful! You, you probably remember from the Power Rangers. Oh, let me tell you all about Saban Entertainment. <laughs> Poor Saban Entertainment. Yeah, and and to together, be fair, Haim Saban, that dude like 
he fucking loves the the shit that that Saban did. Oh yeah, yeah. Like he, that dude was passionate as hell. Right? It you doesn't know. necessarily mean that it was good shit, but he was that, passionate about it. That guy tried to sell Power Rangers for like ten years before <laughs> someone picked it up. Right. And apparent the story goes that he had like this horrible slapped together demo where he had taken Sentai footage and interspersed like, you know, teenage drama, like what right. Power Rangers actually was. Right. But it was apparently so bad <laughs> that like it was embarrassingly bad. Everyone so was, like, bad that even Fox wouldn't pick it up. And so like no one could see, see the vision that he had. Right. right. Which like on paper is a good idea. He just needed to put together a better demo reel. Right. And so, yeah, he shopped it around for years <laughs> before it was finally picked up. Ugh. Definitely. But yeah, so uh, uh, a claim went to him and we're like, we uh -huh. need a TV show to pitch our video games. And so together yes. they created Video Power, <laughs> which you may remember from when we did an episode on Video Power. Right. With the 12 the year old bodybuilder. <laughs> That's the, the same. I remember fucking Video Power. <laughs> and, wow. And do you remember the animated segment in it? No, I think the version I watched didn't have the animated oh, segment. Unfortunate, because I watched it on YouTube and it was oh. like it was cut out or something. Yeah, so they they had these animated segments called the Power Team. No, I do remember the Power Team because didn't it have the fucking uh, motor or not they had, motorcycle. They had the Bigfoot, the monster Bigfoot, truck, the monster truck, like solving crimes. Yeah, it was Bigfoot and Kuros from Wizard and Warriors, and you had uh, oh god, uh, Quirk the tomato. And uh, uh, Basketball Man. I don't remember what game Basketball Man was from. Please go listen to our Video Power episode. <laughs> Please go listen. It was like 100 million episodes ago. Right. But holy shit. The idea that Bigfoot, not the driver of Bigfoot. No, the truck itself. But just the anthropomorphized <laughs> physical truck. Yeah. Is like emoting and solving <laughs> crimes and getting into hijinks. Yeah. Bereft of a driver entirely. <laughs> it just his headlights would blink when he talked. What the fuck is it's happening? Great. Oh, so great. How so, much cocaine were they on? <laughs> well, you have to remember, Haim Saban was involved. Oh, my God. And also, yes. uh, what was his name? Johnny Power was the host or whatever. Oh, my God. Uh, that anyway. kid. They were giving him something. He was getting some extra Adderalls or something, right? man. He was, welcome to Video Power! Like, just... just holy yeah. cow. So that show was a uh, uh, half video game show, but mostly a claim marketing vehicle. Yeah. Uh, it was and commercial. when we say vehicle, we mean Bigfoot. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they, they did keep uh, uh, growing as a company, uh, fueled uh, with whatever cocaine they had left from Video Power. And uh, they, they started making more games, and eventually they were making more games than Nintendo allowed them to publish in a year, which was a problem that many companies had in that era. So right. they purchased LJN Toys in order to <laughs> double their potential output. Uh, <laughs> and LJN had already been making some Nintendo games. We, we did what? a whole episode about LJN. LGN, we did an episode on LJN. We did do an entire episode. Oh, on Oh, why? I don't know. Uh, anyway. Past us liked garbage. <laughs> Video power, LJN. What the fuck were we thinking? LGN, LJN, well known as one of the worst yeah. game producers on the NES, I right? Mean. And really, the SNES too, and I think they yeah. did Genesis stuff too, didn't they? They did. Uh, there's even a Dreamcast game published by LJN. Oh, anytime a you saw that one. little rainbow, it's mm -hmm. like, nope, I'm good. Yeah. Pass. Uh, and, and I will give them credit for this. Uh, when Acclaim bought LJN, they bumped up <clears throat> LJN's uh, development budget by a lot. So their games yeah. were, were better. Um, uh, they had more budget than they did before. I'm not going to say they're better games, <laughs> but they had, they had better production values. I'm than trying they did to think. I, I know that we... Um... I, I know that we went over all of LJN's games. Mm -hmm. Well, probably just, most of them anyway. Or a lot of them. And I'm trying to remember if in the list, I, there was some okay stuff I remember. Like uh, the the one that I remember people saying, oh, this is LJN finally stepping up to the plate was The Punisher, uh, which was uh, an acclaimed game that was published. Was that the arcade game. Punisher? No, that's Capcom. This is okay. NES Punisher, which is an oh. unrelated game. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, 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 was it Maximum Carnage or Separation Anxiety? One of those two is LJN. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they're both great. I like both yeah, well, of those. They, those well, are, they're those both are... developed in-house at, at Acclaim. 
yeah, uh, those just are both LJN published books. one of them because Acclaim yeah. owned LJN at that point. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, I feel like the rainbow was not exclusively plastered on dog shit, I right. guess is what I'm saying. Just mostly dog it shit. It just felt like it was. Yeah, <laughs> especially early on. It was pure dog shit. Yes. Uh, all uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th and Jaws and all that shit pre acclaim all of it is shit. There's not a good yeah. game in there. No. Uh, no. But anyway, uh, so uh, in addition to having LJN as a label for additional any, uh, NES and, and Super NES games, they also wanted to publish games on other platforms, specifically Sega stuff, and Nintendo had a rule against that too. So they yep. formed other divisions for that. They had Arena Entertainment and Flying Edge, which were both acclaim just when they wanted to publish things on Game Gear or on uh, uh, Genesis. Right. So how many companies deep are we already just in the early 90s uh, for so, Acclaim? So now we have Acclaim, we have LJN, we have Arena, we have Flying Edge, and I want to say probe was also them at this point if not it uh -huh. was them shortly after this point yeah so you've yeah. got uh you've got a lot of names here but they're all just a claim they're all in the mm -hmm. same building at this point uh and that's <laughs> and that's when they kind of reached their peak is in yes. the, the early to mid 90s and mid 90s acclaim yeah and it's mostly because of mortal Kombat. yeah that'll do it that because, will definitely do it because they signed a deal with midway uh, in order to be the exclusive publisher of a lot of Midway's popular arcade games, notably Mortal Kombat and NBA Jam. Mm -hmm. And that was where all their money came from. And, yeah. and they were able to suddenly start acquiring studios to develop things in-house, like uh, Iguana, like you mentioned earlier, and also Probe, uh, like mm -hmm. I mentioned a moment ago, because I forgot that I actually put it in the notes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, it looks like because Pro, Probe was uh, was it London? Yeah, they were a London based company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I was yeah, trying to and see. Iguana's down they... in Austin. They're they're local. Well, they were, they were. They're not. They don't exist anymore. Yeah, it looks like ninety five, late ninety five is whenever uh, a, a claim bought them for okay. one thousand seven hundred thirty two shares of common stock. Oh, I thought you were about to say one thousand seven hundred dollars. Yeah, they bought it. For, they bought it for a couple grand. They just rounded it up to be nice. You know, yeah. they just wanted to be. <laughs> just wanted to be kind. Right. They gotta spread that sweet Mortal Kombat money around. But yeah, this like mid '90s era of them was. It, we, yeah, I, uh, Mortal Kombat Two alone is yes. is is huge yeah it, mortal kombat 2 was an enormous hit for acclaim so much so that midway took notice and was like maybe we shouldn't be letting someone else publish our games on consoles anymore yeah and yeah. that was the last mortal kombat that acclaim was allowed to put out uh to the point to where uh midway developed their own in-home publishing label again put out mortal kombat 3 and acclaim was upset that they weren't getting the mortal kombat 3 money so they ported mortal kombat 2 to the saturn at the same time, Mortal Kombat 3 was coming out. That's what you get. Yeah. <laughs> Mess with a claim. They also, <laughs> they also uh, published the Demolition Man game, Saturn. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. So much of their catalog is like tie-ins. It's like Simpsons oh, yeah. games. It's, it's movie tie-ins. A lot of licensed properties, yeah. And so it makes the LJN purchase make more sense because oh, yeah. that's what LJN already did. They just right. squeezed those out. Right. But, yeah, it, it, it's, uh, it's one of those things. Um yeah. That that I don't know. <laughs> they were definitely I, I, one I, of those licensed game publishers, and I believe they are a lot of the reason why licensed games uh, had such a bad rap for so long. Yeah, they did indeed publish Batman Forever, uh, which I owned multiple copies of mm. uh, and played so much <laughs> because I remember I remember playing it so much and being like, "There's no way it's this bad." <laughs> We just don't understand it. You remember that, like back in the yeah. in the nineties, when yeah. you you know you didn't really have internet access, right. so you're like, we just gotta not. Maybe we don't get it. Maybe yeah. we don't understand the controls. Right. Maybe maybe that's what it uh, is. You mean the pit fighter syndrome? Yeah. 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 Uh, and of course, who could forget Porky Pig's the Haunted Holiday? <laughs> uh, yeah, they they did put out a, a handful of Looney Tunes games. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they also. Oh, go ahead. They also published the Street Fighter the movie the game in in North America. Right. Yeah, there was a handful of Capcom games there where Capcom for some reason was skipping on western releases uh and it was uh Street Fighter the movie the game and also X-Men Children of the Atom. For some reason Capcom was like, "Uh, oh, western audiences don't want that." Yeah. And so Acclaim published that one. Weird, which is weird. 
Uh, they also but, did uh, Judge Dredd. Early on, they did Total mm-hmm. Recall. They seem to really yeah. like Stallone. Uh, <laughs> well, Total lots Recall of Stallone stuff in here. Schwarzenegger. Right, but I'm saying they did Demolition oh, Man yeah, yeah. and Judge Dredd, and then True. early on they did Total Recall with with Schwarzenegger. So it you right. know it's they like Stallone, they like yeah. action movies. It's it's, it's all it all it all ties in. Right, it all ties in together. And of course you've got Revolution X, which apparently they <laughs> well that one's also published. Midway License. That's uh, yeah, that's but part they, of that yeah, same deal. yeah, it was the the ports of the the right. from Midway. Yeah. Anyway, but no, onward. They, well, they also did uh, a bunch of Taito stuff at that same time, too, because mm-hmm. uh, Taito had shut their U.S. office uh, shortly before Lufi 2 came out, uh, and I'm still a little jaded about that. Uh-huh. Uh, but uh, but no, uh, Taito just gave up on Western markets, and so Acclaim uh, went in there and, and got the rights to most of Taito's games, especially stuff like uh, uh, Bust a Move or Puzzle Bobble, as it's known in most of the world. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, also the Bubble Bobble and Rainbow Islands uh, collection on Saturn and PlayStation. That's uh, terrible. Don't play it. Oh, uh, but Acclaim made that one. It wasn't a, a it wasn't a Japanese port that that Acclaim localized. Acclaim made it, and it shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not good. Um, and and that's when they decided they wanted to branch out into other uh, revenue streams other than just video games because you know they're they're doing pretty well with video games, but they wanted to you know branch out diversify right so they they hired the former head of sega usa to create an arcade division where they made three games <laughs> it might have been four i don't remember one of them is batman forever uh, 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 i never I, played the arcade version of batman forever it's a port of the super nintendo version god damn it yeah i cannot escape this game <laughs> and they also purchased the parent company of valiant comics to form uh-huh. acclaim comics which also published strategy guides okay which must not have gone on for very long because valiant fucking died uh right so this is the era when valiant died <laughs> because they became acclaim comics for a while yeah okay so you're saying they they just cut off all the valiant shit right yeah they ended it rebranded oh. it as acclaim comics uh, ah, I see. And continued it as acclaimed comics. Most notably, Turok Dinosaur Hunter was yeah. uh, rebirthed as an acclaimed comic before it became yes. a video game. Which Valiant Comics is back, by the way, in case you didn't Correct. know. Yeah. Been back for several years. Yeah. Yeah. For like 10 plus years now. Uh, um, I, I do want to talk about the Turok era of acclaim. Um, yeah. Um, because I feel like the, the you know, the N64 era was very good to acclaim. Yep. Acclaim Sports was just doing great. Yeah. Releasing lots of stuff that was that was celebrated. Yeah, it wasn't uh, as well celebrated as the EA stuff, but it was lower priced, so it still sold pretty well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh they 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 did uh, they did all the Turok games. Yeah. This was their this was their like their in house thing. And they made that South Park game using the Turok engine. And uh, um Turok Turok had its time in place. You know, there was a moment for Turok Dinosaur Hunter. Yeah. Okay. And there's people, people who still have strong nostalgia for Turok. They Dinosaur fucking Hunter. remade both of them. Yep. No, there's more than two. They <laughs> only remade the two? first two. There was three just on N64. Oh my god! I guess I didn't play the third one. And then there is also one on uh, PS2 and Xbox and GameCube. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mm-hmm. then there's one on PS3 and Xbox 360. And I know they were doing the uh, All Star Baseball. Which is, right. is, is I, don't, I don't know baseball, but I've heard that. I've heard about it. So I'm, I'm guessing it's, <laughs> it's, it's good. Yeah, it's sold fairly well. They also did, because there was the South Park game, but there was also mm-hmm. the South Park kart racing game. Yep. And also so, Chef's Love Shack. Yes. The oh, my God. Game. So many bad, bad yeah. fucking South Park games. Yeah. And yeah. they did a lot of shit on Game Boy Color. Yes. Like, I claimed it. A ton of Game Boy. It was mostly garbage. Right. Uh, but they did a lot of Game Boy Color stuff. Yeah. You know, yes, Turok 3 Shadow of Oblivion. Yeah, and there's also Turok Rage Wars. Oh, yeah, Rage Wars. Yeah, nobody nobody likes to talk about anything past two. That's, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, the, that's, that's when really the problem with done. Turok, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, no, the N64 and Game Boy Color era, I feel like was was really kind of, it was their peak. It was when yeah. they were really pumping out a lot of stuff, making a lot of money, and seemed to be doing well. Yeah, and they were also doing a, a ton of stuff uh, uh, on, you know, uh, PlayStation, Saturn, Dreamcast, PC. 
and and they they were they were known for uh, a lot of their console games getting PC ports, which wasn't super common at the time. Mm-hmm. So uh, I will give them credit for that. There you go. Um, but also one thing that they do deserve credit for, they became the first video game company to have its own internal motion capture studio back in ninety five. Oh. oh, great! Okay, of course, you have to remember this is like peak Mortal Kombat two era, right? Right. Where every there was this couple years there where like everything had to be mocap, right? And you're like, why? Please stop. And and the thing is that uh, their motion capture tech that they developed and and helped build at acclaim was legitimately influential on the entire motion capture industry, including what's still used for modern games today for like motion cap when they when they just do like the the motion capture and then apply it to a polygonal model. Yeah. Uh, the they use formats based on old acclaim tech. Uh, mm-hmm. The the standard file formats for motion capture are ASF and AMC, which stand for acclaim skeleton file and acclaim motion capture. Well, that's something. Which, which is weird that acclaim has a legacy anywhere, and that it would be in <laughs> motion capture. Yeah, I just I, I just found it in the list. They did Iggy's Wrecking Balls. Oh God. Iguana Entertainment yep. developed and acclaimed published Iggy's Wrecking Balls. Mm-hmm. I remember that. that it was, was about an iguana published did. by Iguana. That's why his name was Iggy. He was a Saturn. Iguana. It doesn't get funnier than this. <laughs> okay, 1998. July 31st, 1998. Comedy peaked. <laughs> and we have not gotten back there since. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's many years before Tucker and Dale. Okay. Let me tell you. All right, uh, tell me why it all went to shit. Uh, well, acclaim. That's why. <laughs> Show's over. So they had their success in, in the mid to mid to late 90s, right? Yeah. Um, but they were already kind of running into some problems because, uh, like I mentioned earlier, Midway started publishing their own home console games. They were they were publishing their own versions of all these arcade games. Right. And then Cash Cow was gone. Right. And then also... Uh, THQ uh, managed to snipe out the rights to the WWF from Acclaim, who had held Which it for more than 10 years at that point. Yeah, we hadn't talked about that. They did a lot of wrestling games. Yep. They also did a lot of ECW wrestling games. Mm-hmm. And re- wrestling in the N64 era was fucking huge. Well, the thing is, uh, Acclaim had had the WWF license for all of the NES era, all of the Super NES era, all the like Genesis games. And uh, I want to say they published one or maybe two WWF games on N64 before they THQ did. snatched that license. And yeah. once THQ got it, they were desperate to find something. And that's when they went to ECW, uh, just because they, they did. They needed something. They did WWF Warzone. There was one okay. other one. Uh, I was trying to find it. I know they did it, two ECW games. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, th- I think they did at, at least two WWF games, yeah. Right, but yeah, they they you know they that had been a moneymaker for them since the NES, and mm-hmm. to suddenly lose that uh, was a, a hit. It was a blow to them. Yeah, and this is also kind of the post Mortal Kombat Rage era, right. anyway. Yeah, and so they they basically were staying afloat with Turok for a while there. That was <laughs> their success, and then oh boy. In comes the next generation consoles, the PS2, Xbox, GameCube, and Acclaim is basically floundering at this point. You know, they've got their Mary Kate and Ashley games. They've yeah. they've got uh, uh, some licensed stuff from other companies, like they were able to port some uh, Dreamcast games to PS2. Can't uh, believe that the Sega. company that published No One Can Stop Mr. Domino in North America <laughs> would be having troubles. I know. Uh, it's amazing that despite that uh, that trash garbage game, they yep. were still hurting. So then you get to the weird era of Acclaim, where they are desperate to stay relevant. And they did some weird shit. So uh, among the weird shit they did, here's just a short list. They offered $10,000 to any parents in the UK who would name their newborn baby Turok in order to promote the game Turok Evolution. I fucking forgot about the name in the baby Turok! <laughs> and uh, I don't remember which publication it was. I think it was GameSpot. Went back. It might yeah. have been Eurogamer, actually. Tried to go back and find all the kids named Turok. And they, <laughs> they could find zero because all of the ones that were listed as winners for the contest turned out to yeah. be actors. No! Claim why? Uh, they also 
offered to pay for any funerals for families that would put an advertisement on their loved one's grave promoting the game Shadow Man Tweakened Coming. The, the best part about this mm -hmm. one yeah. is that it's so fucked up and dark. Yeah. Because if you've never had to deal with funeral costs of a uh -huh. loved one, this is the kind of shit that people would take because yeah. they can't fucking afford it. Exactly. It's exorbitantly expensive to bury someone. It, you think it, it would only cost a shovel and some wood, but it's a lot <laughs> more than that. Ha, have and you seen any of the pictures of the tomb that they were offering? <laughs> no. Oh, man. Look up Shadow Man Tomb, man. Because there's there were some pictures out there at some point. I, I assume they're still out there. Uh, but yeah, they, they, it was basically a full color advertisement for their shitty shadow man game that they wanted you to slap on the whole top half of your loved one's tombstone, uh, over, Oh no. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I found a picture over here. It's, I it's did just, too. yeah, it's just awful. It's, oh, uh, it's bad. And then if those weren't bad enough for the release of burnout Two, also, uh, that was also a successful franchise that acclaim started was the burnout franchise. Yes. Which uh, did well. Yeah. Uh, and for the release of burnout Two, a claim offered to pay any traffic tickets that drivers in the UK got en route to buying the game. I mean, at some point it has to be illegal, right? It, it, yeah, it turns out that's illegal and the UK, uh, police, uh, various police departments throughout the UK rather did not appreciate that. You don't say. Uh, and then, of course, their most famous dumb stunt was when they were making the fourth Dave Mira BMX game. Uh, they decided that it, the game should just have uh, full or partial nudity. Yeah. And uh, Dave Mira peaced out because he didn't want to be involved in that. And they renamed the game BMX Triple X. Which the best part about this, and this mm. is really the best part about all of these dumb fucking stunts, is yeah. that. No one cared. No one at all cared, yeah. They're doing all this shit to get all this attention. BMX mm -hmm. Triple X came out and people were like, all right, it's got some titties, I guess. Yeah. But, I mean, we have the internet. <laughs> right, yeah. They, they released a uh, game that's only selling point was titties in the era where the internet existed. So like We look at titties whenever we want. Right. Uh, so. It, it's just, it, I, I have to assume somebody at Acclaim Leadership had heard that old adage that uh, any publicity is good publicity. Yeah. Uh, but they took it to the wrong logical extreme. Yeah. I just, the fucking Shadow Man Tombstone <laughs> is the saddest guy. Yes. Like, could you just imagine working at Acclaim and someone's like, my mom died. <laughs> And we can't. <laughs> we can't, we'll, we we'll can't afford shitty game. Just please help us. We can't yeah. afford to bury her. It's twenty five thousand dollars. Right. She she wanted a, a big funeral. She was sick for so. And the, the guy to claim is just like, oh my god, what did we fucking do? <laughs> well, did, did, your uh, mo did your mom like the first Shadow Man? Does she like Shadow Man? <laughs> Will you name your baby Turok? <laughs> Like, <laughs> God, could you just imagine being that receptionist, right? feeling that phone call, and just being like, oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't think anybody would take us up on it. Oh, my God. I, I can't even find any uh, evidence that anyone did take them up on it. Yeah. Because the, the, the one picture that is floating around out there, I believe, is the, like, uh, promo picture that they put out when yeah. they were started this time. So there's a chance that nobody actually took them up on it. And it was yeah. just, you know, them being incredibly um, awful. Yeah. But, yep. Uh, also, because uh, of just the company failing and falling apart, several licensing partners began accusing a claim of not paying royalties, including the Olsen twins. Mm -hmm. Not a problem that they're unfamiliar with. Right. So, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, a claim was among the many companies that were not paying them. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, just, uh, a train wreck. It was a, a, I would like to say a slow moving train wreck, but it wasn't, it was pretty fast no. moving. <laughs> it was pretty quick. Uh, I, in, and Turok evolution was the butt of every joke immediately when it released. It was, mm -hmm. it was lauded as one of the worst games in years. Um, and, uh, and I, I always have to celebrate the, uh, uh, the joke EGM made at its expense because the, the villain in Turok evolution is uh a confederate general cyborg uh, who travels through time to control the dinosaurs god damn it that's awesome <laughs> and stupid <laughs> and, his and name, maybe racist and his name is tobias s bruckner 
Jesus Christ. And so EGM started annually hosting the Tobias S. Bruckner Awards for Excellence in the Field of Crapulence. <laughs> which, which I believe Sean Baby wrote that article every year. <laughs> yep. Yep, that tracks. All right. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, so yeah, they just had a, a ton of games that did poorly, that sold poorly, and just a bunch of bad publicity, mostly of their own design, really. They sucked and died, is basically yeah. what you said. And, and so they, they filed for bankruptcy in 2004. Uh, all studios, subsidiaries, and game titles were sold at auction. Uh, in 2006, the uh, acclaimed brand was resurrected as an online games portal. It lasted for four years before it went bankrupt again. The games offered via Acclaim.com uh, were all uh, free-to-play MMORPGs, and the rights to all of those games were acquired by Playdom, who was in turn acquired by Disney Interactive, where they do nothing with any of those games that nobody remembers. Yeah. Um, so it's just kind of a sad end. And, and uh, like you mentioned, a few years after that, uh, some of the original Valiant team did buy back the rights to the Valiant name, yeah. Uh, as well as uh, most of those comics and rebirth that company. So that's something good, yeah. at least. Um, Acclaim was was up. Acclaim was like the up there with Activision and EA for a while. There. Yeah, for a brief window there. Yeah. In in their height, like Acclaim was big. The idea mm -hmm. of Acclaim going under to someone in like 1996 would have been like really Acclaim. I mean, yeah. they're doing great. You right. know. Um, but, but they they nosedived real quick when we got to the early 2000s. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, when you're packing your games with um, potentially racist Confederate generals and paying <laughs> people's funeral costs if they advertise your game Shadow Man on their tombstone. Oh, don't forget uh, uh, padding your, your BMX games with titties. And then just not paying the Olsen twins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of seems like a recipe for disaster. Yeah, it went downhill pretty quick with the claim. I feel like we've touched on most of their big releases. We didn't mention that they did localize uh, a bunch of the Double Dragon games. True. Yeah. Um, yeah also, yeah. I remember uh, Forsaken was a big deal for like a minute before yeah. everyone forgot it. Extreme G, that series was considered to be a possible competitor to F-Zero for a minute there. Um, and uh, then at the very end there, they wanted Vex to be a thing. Yeah. And then they've basically just, Acclaim's just kind of been dead since then. Yeah, they're just they're just sort of gone. Yeah, uh, uh, Burnout was purchased by EA, who pretended to care for a few years and then stopped. Uh, and most of their games have just been sold back and forth over the years. Yeah, uh, yeah. They, it's, the brand name is owned by a company called Col Collector Vision, who oh bought it who bought it in 2016 alongside some other old name that nobody cares about. Uh, and I, they said they wanted to use it as a retro game developing and publishing label. And so far as I can tell, they have done nothing with it <laughs> in the last six years. That's because uh, uh, Acclaim just really kind of mostly licensed shit. Yeah. So I well, don't they know. Didn't, they didn't buy the rights to any of Acclaim's games. Just the <laughs> brand. <laughs> what are they going to do with it? That was the thing. Nobody knew. Oh, my God. Yeah. As, as far as final thoughts, mm -hmm. uh. That claim was a big deal, and then they yeah, got ridiculous, minute. and then yeah. they died. Oh, <laughs> uh, we call it the. I, I hope that's my life trajectory. Honestly, we, I hope someday it... I can be a big deal before I get ridiculous and die. It's that Charlie Sheen <laughs> arc, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and you know, I would like to say with less cocaine, but I can't guarantee that at all. Yeah, I don't know that anything. <laughs> I don't know. It's just some of these stunts, man. Yeah. It's, uh... It's rough. Yeah, it's, it's rough insane. stuff. Uh, I don't know that anyone misses a claim. I don't know that anyone's right. sitting around like, man, fucking a claim. <laughs> they did some great stuff. Like, they didn't really do a lot of anything. Yeah. Yeah. They had they that a lot brief of window in the late 90s where they developed games. And of those games, the only ones I ever hear anyone say with any kind of reverence was Turok and uh, uh, maybe Extreme G or Dave Mira or Burnout. Yeah. And then that's just kind of it for them yeah. so that's a that's a claim there was uh when like a year before they went under i was working at electronics boutique and uh uh there was a month when a claim paid us to uh promote their games ahead of everybody else's so we mm -hmm. had a separate acclaim section at the front of the store that oh was all all 
uh, 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 Turok Evolution, Burnout One, Extreme G, Extreme G Three, Batman, Batman and Robin. No, it didn't have Shadow that. Man. We we you did have Shadow Man in there, and also the uh, PS2 port of Crazy Taxi. Armarines Project Swarm. I don't think that I'm was just part of reading the games off a list. <laughs> um, so we had all those at the front of the store, and we had to have a big banner that said "Your Acclaim Gaming Headquarters." Oh no. And we were supposed to answer the phone by saying, thank you for calling Electronics Boutique, your Acclaim Gaming headquarters. And one guy at my store one time while the DM was there answered the phone and said, thanks for calling EB where you can acclaim your games. And the DM was like, you have to all do that. That's brilliant. And I said, no, that doesn't make grammatical sense. And he said, no, you have no, to do it. No sense at all. So then I had to do that for the rest of the month. If you are hanging on to some money that you're refusing to pay out to the Olsen twins, <laughs> then consider giving it to us. How long have <laughs> you been hanging on to that segue? <laughs> <laughs> because we have a Patreon. It's at patreon.com slash retro warriors and you can get read along and talking wizards and we'll say your name. What do you want? What do you want from us? What do you want? Tell us what you want. <laughs> we'll what you do really, it. really want. Please, we'll do it. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Whatever you fucking want, just tell me. <laughs> I want the money. <laughs> Justin, uh, you're what? coming off a little desperate. You're coming off. No, a, it's fine. That's it's nearly fine. acclaim levels of desperate. I'll put your advertisement on my tombstone. <laughs> I don't care what it's for. <laughs> just give me money. Uh, um, uh, we do want to thank our following patrons. <laughs> Starting with Norman. And believe it or not, I'm walking on air. I never thought I could feel so free. Flying away on a wing and a prayer. Who could it be? Believe. I do want it known that I yeah. always uh, order the names so uh -huh. that Saturn has to sing the song and I don't have Thanks, to sing Justin. the song. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> he just commits to it. Uh, also, Zero Scroll, Fernando Benavides. And Chris Minocci. Chuck Angeline. Dave Nelson. Matt Kovacs. Jerry Vaz. Space Bruce. And Kevin Meyer. Are all the people that we want to thank uh, for their kind contributions yes. to our Patreon that you can also do too if you want to. That'd be great. And Justin will apparently put your name on his tombstone. I'll put your name on my tombstone. <laughs> That's the that's the thousand dollar a month. Too. You pay me a thousand dollars a month. I'll put your name on my tombstone. And you only have to do it for ten months. That'll probably cover most of his funeral. Yeah, you know it'll be, <laughs> it'll be great. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for listening. We'll be back next week. And as always, let, let us, us cling, cling together. together.